Lesson 12.3c, Using Tables and Equations to Solve Problems. We can use tables and equations to solve word problems that involve real-world situations. A table can help us determine the relationship between given values, which will then help us write an equation to solve the problem. Sometimes a problem will give us clues or facts that we must use to find a solution. We can write given data as dependent and independent variables. We learned about that in 12.2a, which is linked in the description. Many of you know I have three dogs. I have Lola, I have Bonnie, and I also have Betty. So here's Lola and Bonnie. When Lola is 10 years old, Bonnie will be 5. When Lola is 11, Bonnie will be 6. And when Lola is 12, Bonnie will be 7. What will Bonnie's age be when Lola's 14? When Lola is tells us Lola's age is the independent variable. Bonnie will be tells us her age is dependent on Lola's. So that's the dependent variable. We can make a table to represent this information. We have Lola's age at 10, Bonnie will be 5. When Lola's 11, Bonnie will be 6. When Lola's 12, Bonnie will be 7. We need to find Bonnie's age when Lola is 14. And I put when Lola is 13, Bonnie will be 8. We need to find this one. We see a pattern here. Do you see the difference between Lola's age and Bonnie's age? 10 minus 5 is 5. 11 minus 5 is 6. 12 minus 5 is 7. Bonnie is 5 years younger than Lola. So when Lola is 14, Bonnie will be 9. We can use this table to write an equation to fit this situation. Bonnie is 5 years younger than Lola. Since Bonnie's age is always 5 years less than Lola's, we can write a subtraction equation of Bonnie's age in terms of Lola's age. Bonnie's age in terms of Lola's age. We would have y is equal to x minus 5. Bonnie's age is equal to Lola's minus 5. And we can check by substituting for x and y from the table to see if the equation is true. We can use any one of these or even all of them. 9 is equal to 14 minus 5. Yes, that's true. So how old will Bonnie be when Lola is 16? We put 16 in place of x. y is equal to 16 minus 5. We find that Bonnie will be 11. She'll be 11 years old. And we'll be able to use this equation to find Bonnie's age at any age for Lola. Tala puts a percentage of her paycheck into her savings account. When her paycheck is $300, she puts $60 into her savings. When her paycheck is $350, she puts $70 into her savings. If her paycheck is $400, she puts $80 into savings. Find how much Tala will put into savings if her paycheck is $700. We can see the amount she puts into savings depends on the amount of her paycheck. Her paycheck is the independent variable, and the amount to savings is the dependent variable. We can make a table to represent this situation. The independent variable is the paycheck. The dependent variable will be the savings. We fill in the table with the given amounts. We need to find how much will go into savings if her paycheck is $700. And we can determine the relationship between the values by finding the percent. We learn how to find percentages. We did writing fractions as percents in 8.2c. If you forgot, I'm going to have that linked in the description also. We have 300 for the paycheck and 60 for savings. We flip it around and do 60 over 300. We want this denominator to be 100. We need to divide 300 by 3 in order to get it to 100. That means we need to divide the numerator by 3. Remember, it gets jealous. So 60 divided by 3 is 20. We have 20 hundredths. Now we can write that as a percent as 
20%. You can also write it as a decimal as 20 hundredths, right? We can use another one. I'm not going to use this one because we're trying to get to a 100 denominator, and this one is at 350. This one would be easier because it's already at 400. We could just divide it by 4 to get to 100. We divide the 80 by 4, and we get 20 hundredths again. We can write it as 20% or as 20 hundredths as a decimal. Now we write an equation. We let P represent the amount of the paycheck and S represent the amount put into savings. So our equation is written as S in terms of P. We have S in terms of P. Her savings is equal to 20 hundredths times P, the paycheck. And we needed to find how much she's going to put in savings if her paycheck was 700. So we're going to sub substitute 700 for P and then multiply. 700 times 20 hundredths. We have two jumps in the multiplication problem, so there's going to be two jumps in the product. We get $140. So we know if she gets a paycheck of $700, she's going to put $140 into savings. And we can check the other values with substitution. We can put in the 300, the 350, the 400 to see if they multiply by 20 hundredths, if they'll equal those values for the savings. And yes, they do. So we know we did it correctly. Now let's try another quick one. It says when Jim is 11, his father will be 39. And when Jim is 12, his father will be 40. And when he's 13, his father will be 41. How old will Jim's father be when Jim is 25? We can make a table of the values. Here he's 11, his father's 39, he's 12, the father's 40, he's 13, the father's 41. We need to find the father's age when Jim is 25. We're going to let F equal the father's age and J equal Jim's age. We're going to do this as an F for the father's age is equal to J, Jim's age, plus 28. We see that there's a difference of 28 between each of these values. 11 plus 28 is 39, 12 plus 28 is 40, 13 plus 28 is 41. That means if we substitute 25 for J, we're going to get that the father's age is equal to 25 plus 28. We know the father will be 53. Jim's father will be 53 years old when Jim is 25. And this equation allows us to find the father's age for any given age for Jim. Now, we've been learning how to write algebraic equations in two variables, but using common sense and logical thinking, when Jim is 11, his father will be 39. How old will Jim's father be when Jim is 25? can be solved by finding the difference of their ages, 11 and 39, as 28 years. 39 minus 11 is equal to 28-year difference. Then we can apply that difference to Jim's age at 25. 25 plus 28 is equal to 53. We know the father would be 53. So yes, it could be solved just by using subtraction and addition like this, but this way won't teach us how to write algebraic equations in two variables, which is what we're trying to do. And if it seems like we're using easy problems, that's so that you can understand the concept. So we're finished with 12.3. We're going to move on to 12.4, which is split into three parts. The first part is representing algebraic relationships. I'm really proud of you for learning algebra, and I hope you have a really nice day and join me for the next lesson. Bye.